Welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we look at Arizona numbers and try to make sense of this crazy market. While you're here, hit the like button. I was wrong. Yep, I was wrong. And when you're in business, you're supposed to admit you're wrong. I have been wrong a lot in my life, but I was wrong when you go back and you look at what happened in 2020, and I made bold predictions. What I've learned from that is it's kind of hard to make bold predictions, especially in real estate. So let's rewind the clock just a little bit. March 2020, stay home two weeks, flatten the curve. We had a curfew. Can't be out past eight o'clock at night unless you're going to and from work. I've never lived through a curfew. Every place I drove past except for grocery stores and Home Depot were closed. My favorite restaurants closed. I'm looking around, I'm thinking, real estate's toast. It can't possibly survive this. How can it survive when nobody's working? I would have conversations with friends. You understand, this is bad. I mean, nobody's working. How long can you be off work and then you're just going to go back to work uh, uh, after being off for three weeks and didn't get paid and now you're going to go out and buy a house? I don't think so. And what about the business owners? How are they going to survive this? And the more that went on, the more I got concerned that this was looking bad. And I was saying that the C-suite people, the guys in the suits and the business owners are going to be packing their bags by September. So it just wasn't looking good. What I didn't see coming was the amount of government intervention, the amount of money that they were going to send you from the Treasury Department. They're mailing you $1,400 checks, even if you're working. Everybody got a $1,400 check. If you're on unemployment, the unemployment was enhanced by almost $600 a week in most states. So now you're not working, but you're making the same amount of money. And the millennials who were never supposed to buy a home are now saving all their money. They got the, you know, the checks, they got the enhanced unemployment, you're banking it. All of a sudden in July, real estate took off like crazy. Rates were reasonable. They're about 3.2, 3.4. People were out shopping. Inventory started getting tighter and tighter. And instead of real estate prices going down, Real estate prices started going up at a pretty good clip, pretty quick. Why? Because you have to pay attention to supply and demand. So when we started looking at this and updating people on what was going on, you could see there weren't enough homes to handle the volume of buyers that now had the money and wanted to get out there. Were businesses still hurting? Yep. The economy still wasn't looking good, but the the uh, Federal Reserve was buying mortgage-backed securities and treasuries and telling everybody, relax, I got your back. And so it was really impossible to predict what kind of intervention was going to happen. In fact, even the big dogs uh, like Realtor.com came in and said, home prices will hit new heights of 5.7%. Seasonality makes a return. Mortgage rates on the move, 3.4 and the rise of millennials. That's the only thing they got right was the rise of the millennials. Zillow made bold predictions. Basically, what they said was um, home sales growth will be the biggest since the 80s. That was pretty easy. Demand for city living will surge in 2021. I didn't see that happen. Buyers have a harder time affording homes, especially the first one. Yep. Addressing housing vulnerability will be a top priority as rent prices rise and moving will be a first digital experience. What they mean by that is you want to look at homes online more now than ever before. Nobody was having open houses. Nobody wanted people walking through their homes. So the virtual tour, the 360 tour, sorry, I blew out my mic there. The 360 tour became more important than it ever was so that you could digitally walk through a house. You could sell a house to somebody in Chicago. They felt very confident that they saw every square inch of the house. Agents would go in with their iPads or their phones and give a tour. That became more important after the pandemic, during the pandemic, than any other time in real estate. And that trend continues and it grows. I remember I used to read that, oh, what was it? 90% of home buyers wanted to see the home online first. So it was already at 90, 93%. But now 68% of people want to see a floor plan and they want to see a virtual tour. And if it's in the right neighborhood, they'd like to see a drone shot. So they want to get as much information as they can before they get in the car. Now, the other thing that I didn't trust is what I called insiders, real estate insiders, those of us in the industry. Because I remember 
nobody coming up in 2007 and saying that things are looking bad and things are going to go to hell in the handbasket. You remember the Sunday radio shows? They're on there and they're going, it's just ringing out excess. We're ringing out the real estate excess. This is a good time to buy, buy the dip. Nobody was saying this doesn't look good, get out, with the exception of Case Schiller. Now, Case Schiller was a different organization back then, uh, but they were they were raising the red flag. If you wanted to go out and look at it, those numbers were there, and they were showing the inventory numbers, showing how many homes were being built, and showing that there weren't enough people moving here to support all those homes being built, but nobody paid attention to it. Now we have more access to numbers than we ever have. We've got more access to data than we ever have. And so it's really easy to spot any short-term trends, but don't think anybody can give you a good long-term trend. By industry insiders, you know, title reps are really big in this business and they send us information, flyers, and, and you know, and they're, they're basically trying to pump us up. And that's their job so that we can give them our title business when it comes along. So it's not their job to go out and say, hey, Rick, next year's looking pretty bleak. You'll never hear them say that. Realtor.com is never going to say things are looking bleak next year. When it gets bleak, they'll tell you this doesn't look good, but you're never going to see any of those guys go, ah, not looking good. When Zillow decided to stop buying homes, people were saying, oh, they see numbers we don't see. They're out. No, they're not seeing numbers we don't see. They got out because they were paying too much for their, for their homes. They were trying to flip them. For you, the buyer, you don't want to be a flipper unless you have the money for it. Because uh, right now, you know, that's all being gobbled up by Wall Street investors and iBuyers. So it's tough to compete. So try not to treat purchasing your first home as a stock. Look, if you move in in June, you got a house you like, and in July it's worth less, don't lose any sleep over that. You're never going to hit that peak. So you move in, you paid $400,000 for it, and next month it's worth three ninety. Oh my gosh, I'm down ten grand. You got a fixed payment. So that's how you should be looking at housing. I'm living where I want. I like the house. I like the payment. Just ignore the value and just enjoy your life because it'll come back. It'll go down. It'll come up, but your payment's fixed. We can't say that for rent. Right now, single family rentals are starting to show some decreases. Apartments, not quite yet, but single family rentals are kind of getting over purchased by all of this institutional buying that's going on out there. So that's a number that we want to watch closely. Am I, am I going to predict what that's going to look like next year? No, because I don't have enough data right now. But I can tell you there are some things changing because two weeks ago on a Sunday, we only had 4,850 homes on the market. Today on a Sunday, 6,100. That's pretty wicked change in just two weeks. It's changing quickly. Is it a trend? Don't know yet. We'll have to watch it. I suspect it's a trend because rates are going up and buyers are really backing off. So it's not that we're getting this big wave of new listings that are coming on. The people are going, oh, no, this is looking bad. We're going to sell. That's not happening. But the rate of homes are not getting, they're not getting gobbled up at the rate that they were. We used to put 4,000 homes on and 4,000 homes would come off. So what you want to do is you want to look at the trends and you want to spot the numbers so that you're not wrong in trying to predict a long-term trend. Because even in the worst of times, when it looked like the economy was toast, and that COVID was going to economically kick our butt, it was impossible to predict just exactly what was going to happen. And I got sucked into that and said, it's not looking good. And I put out several videos. I think they're still up there saying, be careful. Long around September, businesses are going to close. Everybody's getting laid off. So it's a very interesting time. Uh, the feds are saying they're going to raise rates. I don't know how high they're going to raise them. The market doesn't know. They're vacillating back and forth, 5.1, 5.5. They don't know. Uh, they're uneasy and there's a lot of uncertainty going on right now. So if anybody tells you real estate's going to be down by 15% next year, or an agent says real estate's going to be up 25%, you better be grounded in your numbers so you know whether or not they're full of hooey because we don't know. Now we can say based on the numbers that we're looking at now, if this trend were to continue, real estate will be up 30% this year. That's a fact. But we're starting to th see things starting to slow down now a little bit. So it's okay to hedge your bet and say, well, it's probably going to be only up 18%, but we don't know. Is the Fed, does the Fed have a plan that they're going to raise rates and they want to kind of really constrain housing because that's the only thing that's going to tamp down on inflation? We don't know. And if they do and they succeed at it and housing takes a real bite, are they going to reverse course and lower rates 
and away we go again. We don't know. The president doesn't know. Anybody in Congress doesn't have a clue. Only one or two people in the Fed probably know, but even those guys are guessing. So long, I guess a long story short, do your own research, get grounded in the data so that you're not being surprised and don't rely on one or two people telling you, oh, here's what's going to happen next year because we get it wrong. Have a great day.